Welcome to Rebel Squadron. The Empire is spreading terror across the galaxy, and we need your help to break its iron grip. Combat Recon activated. Welcome back, recruit, to another Grand Arena After Action Report. Um, I haven't been doing too many of these because there really hasn't been much of a need to, but this one is actually a really good example of what I've been talking about regarding <laughs> uh, galactic power bloating and proper use of uh, galactic power and resource allocation. And if you're new to the channel and everything, uh, well, I when I first started playing this game for the first three years or so, I was a super, <laughs> I was an extremely casual player. I played just for the fun of it, plain and simple. I <laughs> unlocked the characters I wanted to unlock. You know, the characters that were my favorites from the movies and whatnot. Uh, I ignored a lot of squads that I simply wasn't interested in because I wasn't a huge fan of them from the movies. That's just the way I played when I, you know, for the first three years or so. And then there's nothing wrong with that. If that's the type of player you are, you have fun with that because I did for three years. Along the way, something clicked, something changed, and I started getting more competitive. And squads that I completely ignored before, I realized that I might want to start investing some resources in. And but by that time, I had such a massive GP bloat that yeah, I knew I was in for a long haul if I wanted to get to the top of that competitive tier. <laughs> so, and this this uh this round of Grand Arena right here, this battle with the Mermaider, is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. So let's get into that. And if we take a look at our opponent for this round, the Mermaider. He does have 4.5 million GP. And if you look at his roster, <laughs> he has only one relic character, Sunfog. I take that back. That is a gear 13. He's not even relic. And so on the surface, it just it doesn't seem like he has like a super strong squad. I mean, he clearly has a solid roster. But as far as overpowering, it doesn't look like it at first glance. And he's got a tiny bit of GP bloat down here. But it's not, you know, it's not the worst I've seen. At least on the surface. So, yeah, just looking at it. Now, he does have some solid characters. He's got Jedi Knight and Darth Revan. Uh, he does have Darth Treya, which means that the guild he's in is completing heroic Sith Triumvirate. So that does say something right there. But other than that, it, it at first glance, it just doesn't seem like it's a really overpowering roster. However, if you look at the field here, <laughs> uh, yeah, he managed to clean me out pretty handily. He did struggle on my front line on the bottom here. Uh, those were my strongest squads. And since he struggled there, I did kind of, I was hoping in, you know, he would have trouble in other areas. But the top field, he just wiped it clean. And as far as my bottom backfield, yeah, he just did a clean sweep of it. And as far as my fleet, it, uh, he had no problems taking care of that. And as you can see, we did not get our full clear. I, I, I struggled a bit on... We had that nest. Uh, that nest was strong enough to cause problems. And then there was that Shakti-led 501st squad which we've seen something like that before. So that wasn't too much of a surprise there. On the front line, we stumbled a bit on those Ewoks. And then over here, yeah, those weren't even as strong as squads. Uh, as you can see, we took a swipe at the Rogue One, which would have been our best shot at getting any kind of victory. And it just, 
I had nothing left at that point for any of these squads. So he, this is a really great example. He has done a great job of GP and resource allocation. And the squads that he has put together, they might not be overwhelmingly powerful, but they are, he's got a strong roster. And it's strong enough to where even with not even touching his G13, uh, the rest of his squads were able to eat up the best uh, squads that I had. And <laughs> making it impossible to even scratch what remained on his top territory there. Uh, this is this is a really good example of just resource allocation in general and minimizing that collective power blow. And that left him with enough on offense to it wasn't a clean sweep. He did stumble here and there. It barely slowed him down. It was not nearly enough to hold the line on defense and bring us the victory. Because his entire roster is built well. And not, not just with the GP, but the squad configuration is very well done. He makes very good use of his resources as far as the roster goes. Uh, the squads work well together. And the characters within each squad are geared up enough to be very effective together and this is a really good example of how to build a strong roster without requiring a <laughs> ridiculous number of resources so you do not have to have relic characters to be victorious if we take a look at his lifetime grand arena uh, yeah he has reached division 2 kyber at rank 1739 and just looking at his roster I wasn't really sure how he managed to do that but after going up against him in this round of Grand Arena uh, it's pretty clear now that he's simply done an excellent job of managing his galactic power and resources and on top of that he did a really good job of putting together his squads uh, they worked they work very well together they're very effective very efficient and he's got more than enough in terms of strong viable squads to be able to hold his defense and clear out the offense so <laughs> if these were things i had known that from day one had even been been interested in in day one of starting this game i would be much closer to where the mermaid is than to where i am right now uh, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. <laughs> that's just uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't interested in competitive play when I first started. It was just Star Wars. I loved it. It was fun. Uh, I got to collect my favorite characters. That's all I cared about, you know. And then something happened along the way, and I got more serious about it, more interested in becoming competitive. And I'm, I'm honestly not sure what triggered it. But ever since then, it's been a journey trying to revamp my roster and rebuild and overcome the GP bloat that is, uh, uh, for no uncertain terms, is uh, dragging down my uh, Grand Arena. Which I'm not complaining about. It is what it is. It's, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with being a late bloomer. And <laughs> the important thing is, you're having fun doing it. And it honestly gives you something to focus on. It gives you something to work towards. And considering how much GP bloat that I have, uh, I actually can't complain about how well I've been doing. It's, uh, in my humble opinion, I'm actually doing pretty well considering how much of a disadvantage I'm at. So this is not a bad defeat for me. Uh, this guy just got a earlier start as far as competitive play goes. And... It's not even about the the resources that he has, such as Darth Atreya, which I'm not even close to getting unlocked. It's a simple GP and resource management, uh, and that's all it is. So I, if I didn't have all of that GP bloat, I'm fairly confident I would be performing much better even 
than I am now. And so I, I don't, you know, it doesn't bother me so much. It is what it is. And at some point, I will overcome that GP bloat and finally be able to break into that Kyber Club, which I've been very close to in the past. Very close. And with this particular round, I stomped the competition in the first round. And then in the second round, <laughs> the victories from the first round launched me into a much higher bracket within Division Two, And <laughs> it was like night and day. And then after that, I kind of leveled out. So it's, it is what it is. And I'm honestly, I'm not doing bad as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it just takes time and patience to rebuild your roster into something that's viable for those higher end higher level parts of the division that you're in and it's just it's just something to learn from take away from and it's nothing to be ashamed of so <laughs> yeah especially if you are enjoying the game and that is the key thing so that said i want to thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video Hit that like button if you did, and if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And with that said, I'll see you in the cantina, Recruit. This is Rebel Squadron, out. Recruit, dismissed.